Matthew Kelly wrote a book called Life is Messy. So, so true. We see in the gospel today kind of a messy situation. You know, when we think sometimes of going out and preaching the gospel, we think of giving a nice, positive, hope-filled, good news message, and everyone or many people accept it in their lives, get better, and everyone's happy. But it's not always like that. You know, when you look at the ministry of Jesus, oh, the things are shaking up. And in particular, you got these two men possessed by demons. Um, They're so fierce, no one could pass their way. And Jesus casts the demons out into the herd of pigs. And the pigs rush off a cliff and drown in the sea. They talk about a messy situation. And then, you know, the people from, from the area say, asking the, the Lord Jesus to leave. <laughs> you know, like you, just, you just think to yourself, now the beautiful thing is the Lord Jesus got the demons out of these two men. Praise the Lord. But it was kind of messy. You even wonder, like, this is, this is the ministry of our Lord Jesus. But some of these situations, you wonder if you want children around. You know, demoniacs and pigs filled with demons rushing off the sea. Can you imagine that? Anyways, and then in the first reading, oh, such a sad story. You know, Hagar and her, and, and her son um, almost dying. But what's beautiful is the Lord sends an angel, sends an angel to help her. I love it when I learn about the Lord uh, sending angels to help. And, uh, and, and like I said, it's still, it's still a sad, messy situation. Uh, but it's kind of the, the reality of, of this life. This life, which is very short, St. Paul says, for this momentary affliction is earning for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure as we look not to what is seen but to what is unseen and 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 uh and saint paul also says i consider the sufferings of this present time nothing compared to the glory that is to be revealed thank god we have faith i feel sorry for people who who don't have some sense of faith and eternal life i don't know how they get through some situations you know, with, without the, the, the gift of faith. And also our faith not only, you know, helps us to, to see that this short life, you know, is only a preparation for eternal life where there'll be no tears and no pain. But we also believe in faith that the, God works all things for good for those who love him. So even in our trials and our deals and, 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 and challenges, we, we somehow know that God is doing something good in this. And it's almost Uh, always uh, not until after you go through the ordeal that you realize you know what that was actually pretty good for for, for me or for the whole situation you know Um, but again it's it's a it's a question of faith but even at a deeper level you know there's the mystery of the cross that is not only meant to be accepted but even meant to be embraced they say it's one of the moving parts of the passion of the Christ movie by, by Mel Gibson. When our Lord Jesus receives his cross in the movie, our Lord Jesus, he embraces it. And, and you think, wow. And, and again, this, this, is, this is kind of uh, at, at the next level. Like, I'm not there yet. Uh, but I, I've been, I felt drawn to, to finally uh, studying the life of St. Gemma Galgani. Who here has heard of St. Gemma Galgani? Yeah, many of you. Um, she's, she's a real phenomena. She died in 1903, so not too long ago in the Catholic sense of things. She died in 1903 at the age of 25. And she was just a phenomenal mystic. She's one of the few mystics in the history of the church. She had like all, or, or you know, not all, but the, the, so many of the wounds. She had the, the stigmata in the, in the hands, in the feet, in the side, also the crown of thorns, and sometimes the, the, the scourging. Uh, but she regularly, regularly communed with her guardian angel, uh, which is part of the reason I'm reading about her. I'm kind of trying to learn more about the angels. Um, but all kinds of wonderful mystical experience. And her, a, a, a defining moment for her was when she made her first Holy Communion as a child, she was inflamed with love for the Lord Jesus. But the point is, is that St. Gemma Galgani, and I, I don't know that much about her yet because I'm only on chapter 10, and there's like, I think, 35 chapters. This is my reading for July. Um, but the, the thing about St. Gemma, oh, oh let, me, let me just continue. So she died in 1903. This is the phenomenon. She died in 1903. She was beatified in 1933. 30 years after she died, she was beatified. That's very rare, especially considering, considering she was a laywoman. 
She didn't have like a religious community kind of doing all the work, yet she was quickly beatified. And then, check this out, she was canonized in 1940, seven years after she was beatified. Again, that's very rare. There's, there's a lot of mystics in the world and in the church, uh, but such a quick beatification and canonization. And so part of the draw for me with her is like, what is it about her? And, and she's one of these mystics. She wasn't satisfied just, you know, living a, 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 a happy, pleasant life. She desperately wanted to be united with Christ in his sufferings because when she meditated on the sufferings of Christ, it just ravished her with love. She was inflamed with love when she meditated on the scourging, that Jesus did this out of love for us and the crowning of thorns and all this. And so she's one of these, you, you call them victim souls, a very pure soul, um, purified by God in the most remarkable way and, and, and um, privileged to sh even share in the sufferings of Christ for which she was honored. You know? And as I'm reading this, I wrote, sometimes I write in, in, in the book, I wrote here, Dear St. Gemma, I'm not at your level. That, that's what I wrote at the beginning of the book. But my prayer as I read this is, I would love to grow in my um, uh, uh, love for and appreciation um, for the cross. You know, to, to, to not just be willing to um, accept the cross, but really to, to see something deeper in embracing the crosses and the trials we face. And so, again, life is messy. We've got our challenges and ordeals. The Lord promised that. That's what this life is all about, preparing us for eternal life. Uh, but let's pray for the grace to be more and more like Christ, who picked up his cross and carried it and calls us to follow him.